what's up? It's me, again. Uh, it is officially day nine of my journey in through Australia. And I'm at the beautiful, beautiful, just beautiful uh, Fuji Beach. Or the uh, Coogee Beach, as they, uh, they like to call it here, as the locals. But um, there's my Australian accent, number one for, for the trip. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm here. It's great. Uh, it's been it's been a crazy week. Got a lot of things that I've had to sort out and uh, a lot of errands to run and stuff. But all at the same time, this gorgeous, just this gorgeous backdrop the entire time, and it's absolutely breathtaking. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm actually meeting more resistance than I expected um, in Australia. And I'm not talking. I've, no violence or anything like nothing nothing out of the ordinary nothing crazy at all but uh but uh yeah just like going into bars and stuff i get a lot of like the 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 bouncers give me a lot of crap actually for uh they're just like american why like i don't know i guess it's all in good fun but it's just like oh did i do something you know wrong and i've been talking to a lot of my international students and i've been asking them their uh legitimate opinion about uh, america and how they see it and um and what what their perception of it is and basically uh it's you know stuff that i think is so ingrained in a lot of the classical mainstream school of thought america maybe not where i'm coming from maybe not on the other coast east coast but um a lot of narrow-mindedness a lot of ignorance a lot of um unwillingness to change and uh yeah, and you know, it, it, it's initially it's kind of hard to hear that um, sunscreen all over myself. Um, but yeah, and and you know what? I uh, I took my first class today. It was um, it was pretty intense. <laughs> By intense, I mean relaxed or actually hectic, as they call it here. Oh yeah, that was hectic. That's what they'll say here. Uh, it's um it's pretty interesting, but. Uh, but yeah, so I went to class, and uh, everyone here is just so much more relaxed than uh, the U.S., at least at my, the universities that I have been at at the U.S. Um, I'm, I'm the only one in the entire lecture hall that's tapping their foot nervously, like, uh, you know, like the, the thing where you like, uh, like that. Um, yeah, I'm the only one that's doing that in the entire class. I'm looking around, everybody's relaxed, everybody's chill. I'm the only one freaking out. Uh, yeah, it, it's and it's crazy. It's the people people will uh, raise their hand in class, and uh, the professor will call on them or whatever, or even the professor will just call them out straight up. And rather than there being some kind of weird, kind of like resistance, like oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know, like very quietly and very kind of unassuming, what you will get is uh, a legitimate response. As though I, I'm kind of talking to you at this level, I'm a little louder than I normally am, but that's just to make sure the waves don't over that but talking just like a normal just like a normal conversation and it's uh it's pretty refreshing to see i i wasn't ready for it so i didn't raise my hand or anything but uh and then another person will come in and just be like oh you know what i think this this and this and that's that's totally fine that to me is awesome another thing too uh respect i think in um, australia so far i mean if it's only been one class so i don't really know but um respect here the uh the people that are taking these classes they don't get up Nobody at all, the entire lecture, got up to go to the bathroom or to leave. No one left the room. As soon as they came in, maybe roughly five minutes late, maybe. And the course started a little five minutes late, but whatever. He was setting up the PowerPoint, no big deal. Uh, nobody left, which is amazing because at the orientation thing where uh, where I did, I did an Aboriginal dance, which you my guys might see or you might not, uh, I did on stage. But, uh, so we went to this orientation thing where basically they gather all the exchange students in one uh, convenient location and um, and yeah, they gather them there and then a good amount, uh, mostly um, attractive young females, I'm assuming uh, they left the room. And I'm assuming, honestly, I think all of them were American and all. I don't see, I don't see Swedish girls or Holland, Holland people just like leaving their school, they're, they're paying money for I, I've only seen that from Americans but uh but yeah no it's definitely to hear that to hear all these opinions about America and that you know we've been we have been brought up for so long that 
maybe not even overtly, maybe not like, you know what, you are the best, but just inherently um, taking all this stuff in, taking all these stimuli, stimuli in uh, that unknowingly goes in your mind that, oh, you are the best, even though you're not. Anything that then challenges that becomes an issue. Yeah. Something that I was reading today, uh, the professor told us uh, to look up some um, to look up some uh, textbooks uh, in the library if we hadn't taken a class here before, and I was like, I sure. So I did that, and then the, the class was a uh, international human resource management. So what a name, yeah. But um, yeah, so I, I went in the library. I read. I was reading through that book, and I, I saw like, oh, the American perspective on on uh, the workplace, and I thought, oh. I'm very curious to see this from a third world, from a third person perspective. Um, yeah, not not third world. This is uh, this is pretty nice. But um, but yeah, and what I found was that uh, it's it just having read it clearly and concisely away from um, what I'm being told and what I'm being what I've been taught and stuff. Just reading it from a completely objective third person perspective. They didn't say anything bad, but just like the fact that we're very um, success oriented, very goal oriented individualistic and that um, very uh, impatient actually yeah I would say that impatient like time is money like that's apparently that's a very American phrase according to the textbook that I was reading um, didn't know that but I guess it's yeah, I'm learning so that's great but, uh, but yeah so comparing the American business ethic to other things like the Swedish for example uh, the Swedish are much more uh, group oriented. They're much more willing to um, take other people's opinions of things and uh, and come to a conclusion about it. And and they they score high in places like inter interpersonal relationships, communication, and just um, cooperation. Whereas in America, it's all about individualistic goals and drive and stuff. And it's another thing too I was thinking about because I'm so identified with that success failure model that I read in this book and I saw it third person because I'm so identified with it it makes it uh, that much more debilitating to me when uh, I find that I'm not succeeding it's not even so much like success failure and then like the starting point it's just success and failure and if anything that is not success is failure so then if you're completely based in success and all you have is success, then anything that's not success challenges that. And then you deal with this this crazy identity issue that you have to deal with for the rest of your life, potentially. Unless you know how to change it, which is kind of what I'm doing out here. But, um, but yeah, you know, a lot of people are telling me that Americans are ignorant and stuff and have a very narrow-minded perspective and uh, how... Uh, and yeah, how we're a lot of very narrow, very narrow-minded and stuff, and basically, uh, that's kind of why I wanted to travel abroad. You know, I had to. I've never been outside of the states before. I've never, never traveled overseas. Never seen complete water over, under my uh, my plane before. I still haven't because I arrived in the at, uh, at night. But um, but yeah, I thought I would go out, uh, see the world, and. Um, gain a new perspective which is a really big thing and I just I challenge all the people that are back home even if you, do, you don't have the money that's fine uh, but do something different go out there do anything different uh, community service whatever you don't have to do that that's fine uh, at the very least travel I mean I traveled down to visit a friend in UCLA the week before I came here as like practice taking like a seven hour like a 12 hour bus ride just as just as like practice for like being on the plane for that long, uh, I did that, and just navigating the places and seeing different faces and, and, and going, taking different routes and, and improvising and trusting your gut, which is another one. I'll probably do a video on trusting your instincts too, once I think of more articulate things to say about it. But uh, but yeah, these are all things that I got in, in traveling to um, uh, UCLA, Santa Barbara, um, even Santa Cruz again, just doing it while I'm not at school, I guess kind of responsible for my own uh, schedule and stuff, and I think that's what a lot of Americans need to do. Um, I, I realize on this trip that I'm not nearly as responsible as I thought I was. I always thought that I was very, um, you know, mature 
and articulate and all this stuff. But my standards for articulation are nowhere near the guys from. I have friends from Switzerland now. I got friends from Germany, uh, Sweden, uh, Spain, uh, just Bangladesh, uh, my uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, Sri Lanka, even just all these places that like China, all these places that uh, have people that are so much more uh, comfortable than you know just I am and I'm just I'm 21 these guys are like 18 France even I was talking to this French girl and she's like oh no it's it's not a big deal just traveling is, is great and um, and it is great I'm just it's like but she doesn't have that same kind of fear and I just think that my opinion is at least in Europe and other places travel is almost encouraged whereas you know the United States the travel industry isn't really up there I'm thinking maybe that's something I want to do with my life someday is definitely like try to find a way to make something make travel mandatory. But um, but yeah. So challenge yourself, travel, even if it's just a bus ride down the uh, down down your coast a little bit. Just see a different place, be in a different area, even just traveling and, and making sure you do things and making those mistakes not being afraid to deal with the consequences, calibrating after the fact rather than thinking of all the things that would make you worry before and just doing it, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, so I gotta go. I'm getting called by the people that I'm with. Uh, but yeah, this is video blog number, I wanna say four, yes. Video blog number four, day nine. And um, yeah, I will see you soon. This gorgeous place, man. Like, holy crap.